Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in the faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was a light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so, God called the dome sky 
and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth veg vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit from the seed within it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be light in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the least light to rule the night with the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring form, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree and with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every piece, beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trinity Sunday, Psalm 8. 
O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adore him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beast of the field, the birds of the air in the fish of the sea and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw them, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May God's word fill and renew our hearts this day. Ah, yes, Trinity Sunday. One could imagine old man Tertullian sitting at his desk in an old monastery, surrounded by parchment and relics of errors gone by. He sits by the window overlooking the village below. He scratches his head in wonder about the God he has come to know, that God who is beyond all knowing, yet whose love impacts his soul. Like many a scholar, theologian, curious onlooker and devoted disciple, before him he can't seem to quickly come up with an answer to those fundamental questions and problems plaguing, even to this day, all of us. 
Questions like, how do we understand God? How are we called to be in relationship with God? Tertullian, as he gazes out his window at the breathtaking colors of the evening sky, coins a term that will live well beyond him. The term is Trinity. The understanding of God as three persons unified in one whole or a triune God. We're familiar with some of the phrases of the Trinity, aren't we not? The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. God who created us, saved us, and calls us to greater life. No matter how it is expressed, it speaks to the active presence of unified presence of God. We who value certainty, clear boundaries, marked territories, walled borders, consistency that stays within the lines, safe and protected, controlled, dignified, orderly, methodic, might indeed struggle with the concept of the Trinity, which reveals mystery, the unknowing, the spiritual, fluid boundaries, embracing of all, limitless love of God who remains throughout history, relentlessly determined to be faithfully in relationship with the likes of us. So here we sit with an imperfect theological construct to define divine mystery. One thing the understanding of the Trinity requires is a willingness to enter into this mystery. It's not something one can just sit by and observe from afar. For the Trinity is inviting us in. There is a fluidity in being invited into a dynamic relationship that might be likened to a dance or even a game. In either of these examples, sitting on the sidelines or cementing yourself to your seat does not allow you to engage and have fun, does it? Hmm? We all might remember our junior high classes and dances and parties when the boys were cemented to the wall over here and the girls were cemented to the wall over there and neither the two mixed. Similarly, God is inviting us into the Trinity to experience the fullness, a joy, a creative power, and a contagious compassion for others. So perhaps we, like Tertullian, might one day be sitting by our windows, looking out into our villages, our places of home and work, places to sit and wonder, but also to hear that invitation that the Trinity provides us. to get up, to go out, to mix it up with people, not only socially, but also in reflection of our mandate to love one another, to go beyond ourselves. We think of creation in this light, that God created the heavens and the earth. We hear that whole Genesis story and God created this not just some static thing, but God said after every moment of creation that it was good. That life is meant to be lived 
in fullness and in joy. That we're all partaking of that joy. That it's not just for us, the select few, but for everyone. By connecting with the Trinity, by taking up that invitation to dance, to walk with our neighbors, to lend a hand, to give compassionately, to give of our very selves, to enter the depth of the relationship that God is inviting us to, is the true mystery and meaning of this wonderful day we celebrate on Trinity Sunday. May we come to accept that offer. May we come to enter more fully into the Trinitarian understanding of God in our midst, welcoming us, having us experience the depth, the love and the grandeur of all that is before us. May this be so. Amen. Let us reflect on our faith as we recite together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Dear God, you told us you will listen when we pray in Jesus' name. So now we pray for the church. God, help this church live our mission, that we may be salt of the earth and light to the world. We pray for the world, for the Episcopal Anglican Province of Alexandria and the Right Reverend Sami Fawzi, Archbishop of Alexandria and Bishop of Egypt. Awaken us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. We pray for the community, for the Church of the Good Shepherd Savona, the Reverend Suzanne Johnston, the Reverend Rich Kraft, the Reverend Michael Laver, prison guards, prison visitors. Give great grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ and one another and love as he loves us. We pray for those in need. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. We remember those who have died and those who mourn. Give comfort to those who mourn. Bring them peace in their time of loss. 
We pray for ourselves and our ministries. Your word is a lamp for our feet. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Those things, good Lord, that your servants have prayed for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, Answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes for Jesus' sake. Amen. God has promised forgiveness of our sins to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and themselves forgiving. In silence, we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry, we repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Savior Christ's sake and renew our lives in the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God, have mercy on you, pardon you, and set you free. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator. Loving and faithful, holy and strong, you made us in the whole universe and filled your word and world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus, our Savior, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sin. He rose in glory from the dead. You sent us your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say, Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God, unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Great is the mystery of faith. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit 
that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and blood. Pour out your spirit that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honor and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and his Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You've united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send for us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your re redeeming love in the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you and guide you in truth and in peace. May the blessing of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life be with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.